welcome to the Kuimungi Institute, our Q&A conversation for Exploration Series. I'm Paul Robert, the Executive Director and President of the Institute, and along with my wife, Laura Lee, the Director of Research, Education, and Outreach. And on behalf of our Board of Directors, Advisors, Volunteers, and Supporting Members, we want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, the Kuimungi Institute is an independent, nonprofit research organization committed to researching consciousness in the human experience following the footsteps of our founder, um, anthropologist, Dr. Felicitas Goodman. And our focus is reflected in three main areas, experience, education, and exploration. We respect the path of academic balance, the creative pursuit of science, while advancing, conserving, and restoring a direct experience of the deeper human connection to all of life. And as an educational institution, we take an open approach and we invite scholars in related fields to help broaden the scope of our own work and exploration. That's why we call this conversation for exploration on these Sunday discussions, a full spectrum of topics from anthropology, archaeology, neuroscience, astronomy, philosophy, mythology, theater, shamanism, the arts to the sciences and everything in between. It's a big universe out there. And you're welcome to visit. So we go exploring. We go exploring. Yeah. Um, you can visit our website, queamungainstitute.com. All these presentations are free. And as a nonprofit, of course, we invite you to become a supporting member. And we want to thank you, the community members who continue to support the mission of the Queamungay Institute. Today, let's explore the psychology of survival. And when we hear the word survival, we mostly think of off the grid, out in the wild physical world survival for people who are in extreme conditions. However, we also need survival skills to navigate the everyday world that surrounds us. Life is in constant motion. Things are changing. We are experiencing an unparalleled degree of changes and, and uh, challenges and uncertainty right now. And we only need to look at the impact of the last few years uh, through the pandemic where we experience being isolated, loss of community, even loss of loved ones without being able to say goodbye. So we've had to pivot, we've had to adapt, we've had to make a shift in our mental game to develop solutions. Also equally important for survival is that we were reminded how we need to focus on maintaining our own physical health. Our guest today says survival is 80% a mental game. When you get in touch with your deepest fear, in strengths, you'll know yourself in new ways. Mm. The ability to not only survive but thrive in times of high stress lies in empowering ourselves with skills uh, we need to understand and manage and leverage stress effectively. Finding plenty of proven ways to adapt and develop patience, the mental focus needed to overcome adverse conditions. And there's evidence that those who participate in self-development practices such as yoga, martial arts, meditation, and of course our own ecstatic postures see a fundamental, uh, see it as fundamental to expand the mental capacity to reduce anxiety and fear and maintain that flexibility needed to address this ever-changing world. And our guest today likes to term it survival shamanism. <laughs> well, I mean, think back to our early ancestors who were experts at survivor, surviving. And I'm sure that survival 101 to the PhD level back then was a part of everyone's curriculum from an early age on. And today we need to seek out such curriculum. We've spent a lot of time trying to make our world safe and comfortable to the point where it's no longer safe and comfortable for, <laughs> for any life form out there, but that's another story. But we can gear ourselves up. We can have simple tools. I'm not talking about weapons. I'm talking about simple tools. Duct tape, he says, is an essential. And we can gear ourselves up with the mental game and a few, um, a, a few skill sets. And because accidents happen, wrong turns in the road, um, our technology breaks down and leaves us exposed. The ground beneath our feet, the skies overhead can unleash their challenges. Uh, Mother Nature is very good at that. And then the wild animals down to the insects can pose their challenges. So uh, we just know that the world is becoming more and more uncertain. 
And these are good skills to have, whether you're out on a hike or a road trip or walking across the street. These are some good skills to have. So let us welcome. Oh, I'm just trying to go buy groceries during the pandemic, but yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, let us welcome Fabrizio Nannini from Milan, Italy. He's an author. His day job is photographer. Uh, his book is Mental Survival. As a survival coach, he takes people around the world, Africa to Italy to the Thank Alps. you. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. So welcome, Fabrizio. I'm glad to be here with you and uh, to talk about survival psychology. I'm glad to hear it's more MacGyver than Rambo, because that lets me in yeah, exactly. to this game. So, um, so how did you get interested? What, did you have something happen in your family, in your own life that you said, ah, survival, I really need to study this and then teach this? What happened to, to put you on this quest? I think it was because uh, each summer, starting from uh, zero to 14 years old, I be dad's house uh, in uh, the mountain uh, side of Italy in Apennines, uh, so the central uh, backbone of Italy, uh, in a very, very uh, wild place, uh, which uh, I had a few contacts with uh, other people, so, uh, and I was uh, not left by myself, but uh, I had a lot of time to be in the nature and to uh, hike and to discover what was around me. So uh, I get to realize uh, soon that uh, I need some uh, skills uh, to, to be more uh, in tune with nature and to explore uh, and, and survive uh, in nature, even if it was a day hike, um, with, with a better skill set. So I, I learned by reading the first books that uh, one can read in the, the 80s, like uh, the USMC FM, 21 slash 76, which is a code name for uh, the uh, survival manual of uh, the United States, the Italian translation. And um, so it was my beginning. I started with a simple knife, then uh, I learned how to tie knots, uh, how, to, how to walk in nature also, uh, how to see the signs, the clues of uh, whatever is around you, because uh, survival is about uh, awareness of uh, uh, yourself and your environment. How to walk in nature to see the signs and the clues. Oh, yeah. Tell us a bit about that. How do you walk in yeah. nature and you're listening, you're paying attention, you're, you're noting, you know what the signs mean. You can see what's <laughs> about. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like uh, the closest thing to what I mean. I think it's like uh, mindful walking because uh, uh, in these days, uh, we are used to walk with a cell phone in our hand without paying attention to what's around us. And uh, the first thing we say to our guests uh, in the um, survival courses is to get rid of cell phone immediately. Because uh, each step has meaning. Each step is uh, meaningful because if you uh, put a foot in the wrong place, you can uh, sprain your ankle or you can fall down a crevice because uh, uh, nature is not forgiving and not even city. In the city, the same thing is if you um, walk down the stairs and you don't pay enough attention, uh, you will have the same consequences. But in nature, uh, it's, uh, it's an, on another level because uh, you can feel a, a deep connection with nature uh, you don't have to feel the attachment like, uh, I, I mean, I live in the city uh, most of the time, so I, I've seen that people are really detached to, na to nature when they come uh, with me when the hikes in the woods and stuff like that. Because uh, initially you need to uh, reinstall that connection, that ancestral connection, that uh, um, the urbanization uh, and uh, maybe uh, our religion in Italy has uh, make uh, separated with, uh, between mankind and uh, nature, nature because uh, yeah. we, we are a whole, we are a whole with mm -hmm. it. Beautifully said. I mean, we are, um, we, need, we need to, uh, to, to explore the nature. Uh, in the 80s, uh, in Japan, they invented forest therapy because they have seen that during a, a trial period of uh, 10 years that uh, hiking simply in nature without uh, any particular skills, but just walking in nature and uh, having a, a weekly contact with it like uh, two hours a week, 
uh, they save 10% on um, uh, the expense for, um, uh, I don't know, uh, what's the name, for uh, medical, medical care. expenses, for uh, medical care for the whole country, 10% in right. 10 years, uh, just uh, uh, like uh, forcing the people to get out of the cities and uh, hike in nature. And uh, yeah. walking in nature, mindful, lower, lower your cortisol, which is a stress hormone, uh, breathing properly, it's another thing that can lower your cortisol, it can balance your uh, testosterone cortisol uh, balance, which uh, uh, needs to be in favor of testosterone, which uh, can force you to uh, recover faster and uh, uh, to be less stressed. So you, like you, this. Nature provides its own medicine, just being in nature. Yeah, and I, I wanted to catch that yeah, point. Yeah, so like a medicine. Yeah, at that yeah. point you're making about breath, did you say, did, were you talking about breath as how it contributes? And is, during, the, during the walking, having an awareness of the breath. What, and also think of the quality of air that you're breathing in mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally different, the air quality, your quality, yes. Yeah. But even the awareness of uh, breathing brings you right here, right in this moment, Present which is moment. central to survive. Because if you, uh, it, I, I, it's not the lions that attacks you and uh, kills you, that makes you survive. It's a small distraction. It's uh, forgetting the cell phone when you go in the wood, forgetting to tell your parents that or your relatives that uh, I want to go from here to here, this is my course. Uh, um, it's a small details that, uh, that can kill you uh, yes. once you're in the wood. Uh, it's, and situational awareness and uh, presence, mental presence is a, a number one enemy and your number one allied once you master it. Well, situational up, awareness. Yeah. So just scope yes. out where you are. Pay attention. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and we live yeah, in a world. We live in a world of mass distractions. There's so <laughs> much to pull us away exactly. from, from from individual focus. And so, not only does it apply to being out in the wild, but it talks about just being able to live in our home, in our city, in our in our community, in our country. I agree. Totally agree. Yeah, exactly. Well, think of all the people also who have died trying to get that selfie in a dangerous situation. Oh, yeah. Right? You yes, read exactly. about it all the time. Pops up in the news. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And which yeah. is exactly. Mm -hmm. Number one, ki one killer in Italy in the 90s was uh, alcohol on the road. Number one killer now is uh, SMS, texting while driving. It's uh -huh. uh, You get um, uh, ripped off of your li driving license if you are caught here with uh, texting uh, with uh, your cell phone while driving. And I think it's a correct measure because uh, yes. really distraction. Each time you have a cell phone, you get tunnel vision, which is something that you need to avoid at all costs because you focus everything in here and you forget what's surrounding you. Then you, you eat a branch or a tree in your face, uh, you can uh, um, misstep and uh, fall down. Uh, everything can happen right. if you're not present. <laughs> and it's one thing to endanger your own life, it's another to endanger others who oh. just happen to be going by yes. when you crash. That's right. right. That's absolutely right. Yeah, in a group, uh, there's no me and other because uh, if you sprain your ankle and you can't walk, you're a huge uh, problem for a whole group. Otherwise, yeah. they will, will uh, roast you on fire, but cannibalism is not allowed uh, usually <laughs> if you are for a sprain, ankle sprain. But, uh, uh, they need to transport you and uh, take care of you. So uh, there, uh, if it's something, it's, um, if it's a military mission, it's okay. But if it's a um, weekend, weekend, uh, it's uh, something you will avoid at all costs. Yes. So, <laughs> situational awareness, it's uh, paramount everything, uh, everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. you say that there are certain um, do's and don'ts so you know you always read about somebody following their phone and they get stranded on a road that if they had looked out the window they would have thought no this isn't the right road but they're so dependent on their uh, their gps, GPS. On their phone leading them and they they're being willing to be led astray mm -hmm. and then they get out of their car and then they try to go what do you do if you get stranded stay in the car don't stay in the car right what oh, do you i mean that's six, that's six, one that you read about a lot as well yeah. that shows up in the news if they'd only stay you know that's the snow yeah and yeah it depends on the situation it really depends on the situation because uh, if you are on the road on a primary road uh, you don't have to wander around but you stay in the car and uh, uh, eventually they will find you 
uh, if it's winter time and it's very freezing uh, or if it's too hot and you don't have water you need to provide to yourself uh, preventing like having like a, a water bottle with you always because uh, uh, mm -hmm. number the second uh, worst enemy is dehydration yes. and the first one is uh, hypothermia and uh, with a simple uh, space blanket like this uh, which is uh, you will pay a couple of bucks uh, in the sports stores it uh, will save your life it saves mine uh, I can count how many times because uh, at the beginning I made many mistakes and uh, mistakes are a great teacher uh, once you overcome them so uh, uh, with this you can save your body it for a few hours then uh, it will it will be helpful but uh, yes. there are many strategies uh, that you need to uh, invent and uh, create for uh, every situation uh, recently i i tried to use this one uh, for signal this is a green laser and you can see it uh, really really uh, for a kilometer for miles and miles away and uh, it can point directly where you are because it's a uh, it may uh, here there are too many lights but you can see it uh, um, at night time you see the the uh, the beam, beam just the beam so with a with a, the beam i'm not pointing in the camera otherwise i will destroy it but but <laughs> with the beam they can trace you back uh, i mean i'm against uh, technology uh, relying on technology because uh, oh, no. uh, each time i use something technological or, or it, uh, the battery has uh, gone uh, or uh, <laughs> yeah. they fail or uh, you know, uh, shit happens, uh, and in technology, really, that there, it's uh, Murphy's law made uh, real. So yeah, uh, you, you can you can learn how to start a fire in every possible situation because uh, a fire creates smoke. Uh, uh, in Italy, we use a lot of thermal drones for search and rescue. Uh, if you create a fire, even if it's nighttime, uh, uh, no one will see the smoke. Uh, if, depending on the color of the smoke that you can create uh, they will find you with uh, thermal drones or uh, there, there are so many things that you can learn uh, i mean if you are in savannah in a third world country maybe then the thermal drones are, can be useless because there's uh, so much uh, heat that uh, they, they, they don't see the difference They'll see and, your, uh, so your they, thermal they, imprint right yeah right so yeah yeah it depends on the environment, on the situation, uh, on uh, there are a lot of factors. Uh, but I think the key thing you say is stay warm and stay hydrated because if you don't, your technology will start to fail. fail. Your body will start to fail. You'll get the mumbles, yes. grumbles, and stumbles, uh, and then you are not thinking straight, and your thinking is impaired, and then you're uh, really in trouble. Uh, I should think exactly, right? exactly. Keep yourself. Yeah, but each time the situation gets worse, your morale gets worse. And uh, when your morale gets worse, it's a, a loop. So it's a negative circle. It's a, a um, self-feeding negative circle that will make you take a worse and worse decision each time. And uh, you, you know, need give to give up and lie down and go, let me get it over with, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah, you're yeah. touching on the psychology of it. I mean, that whole, that, that's the most important component to the entire thing is not to fall into yeah. fear and to lose your, like you talked about, maintaining, your, maintaining hydration and, and maintaining yes. yourself so that you can be in a position. It's, yes. yeah. You say it's more of the situation. You say it's more of a yeah, driver oh than Rambo. So really, you yeah, can exactly. think yourself out of, you can find solutions. You can <laughs> yeah. find the best strategy I, is what you seem to I will make a visual comparison between what I mean with uh, MacGyver and Rambo. All right, this is Rambo, okay. Yeah. He can chop you, he can kill, he can uh, take down a tree if used properly, but it can do not so many things. This is MacGyver. Yeah. He has a uh, pliers. He has a uh, knife here or whatever. I mean, because it's quite rigid. He has a small saw here, uh, and, and there are two things that you can do. Pliers. He has a knife here, like the other one, not as much as performing, but uh, uh, you have so many things that you can do. Um, wh whenever you have one specialization, uh, wh whenever you are tool, you have tool built for just one purpose. You lose yeah. many 
uh, of the other purpose. This one, I don't know, you can chop down a tree with this one. It will take a long time, uh, much longer than with this huge blade. But the thing is that uh, with this, you can use a saw, use a pliers, use uh, many, many things that you don't have in that one. This is MacGyver. <sighs> this is Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Rambo does one thing, MacGyver does many. Yeah. Well, I also have to say that I always go with tweezers on a hike around here because there's cactus yeah. and you're going to brush up against those cactus. Uh, and you, you know, yeah, exactly. I've seen people take two rocks and try to, because you don't want to touch or you uh, don't want to bite the, the spines. Yeah, tweezers out. are yeah, so underrated, this, this tool but they're really a great tool. Save you. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they were uh, put in uh, the early, in the 90s. Uh, I don't know if, uh, even in uh, Victorinos, which is a classical. Uh, Swiss Army knife, it has a tweezer because uh, if you get but by the, a small torn on your finger can make a huge infection if you don't uh, took it off. So uh, you can die for uh, one torn. So, uh, yeah. so um, getting rid of that one, uh, it's not a Rambo thing, but uh, it's a MacGyver <laughs> thing. But uh, yeah, but it will save your life. Yeah. And with uh, and not even Rambo will chop his, uh, off one finger for a torn. So yeah. <laughs> a multifunctional tool, uh, it's always uh, highly appreciated in the survival. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and Fire starting, you've got a fire okay. starter that's really clever yes. and very small as well, because, yeah, yeah let's see that. Yeah, well. about I got one here, a small one here, it's a... Uh, Ferrocerium rod is something you can uh, um, use to make uh, like this. It's make super it easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sir. Get a little moss or a twig. Oh, yeah, there you go. I will, I will not destroy the computer, but you make a lot of stars <laughs> with this. And uh, uh, use properly, it will start a fire. It will start a fire, but you, you, uh, you need to have the right knowledge. You need to maybe put some tinder. Uh, mm -hmm. bigger um, pieces of wood, uh, mm -hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, up till uh, you can start a fire that will self-maintain. Uh, but this, to start a fire, is something, it, it, it's waiting in grams, it's waiting nothing. You can take it in your pocket, wherever you want. You just need a carbon seal uh, or stainless steel uh, to make sparks and it's okay. Uh, yeah. It's one of the thousands of ways to start a fire there's uh where it is it's like um oh i don't know where it was it's like uh it will, you know that with uh, lighter fluid uh which is glycerol this one this well a common uh, lighter fluid for uh, electric uh, cigarettes no that's not lighter fluid i'm sorry it's uh, just for um um, electric cigarettes, it's um, something that makes a um, uh, big vapor. With uh, potassium permanganate, you can put those two together and you start a fire. But the thing is that, uh, that I'm not contradicting myself that you have a hyper specialized thing because with uh, potassium permanganate, you can uh, make water drinkable because it's uh, oxidant, so it will kill all the bacteria and viruses in it. So. Uh, it's, it's something, and it will treat uh, the condition of your skin because uh, it, will, uh, will like, it will act like a, a first aid uh, on your skin. It will make your skin bluish, but uh, it's okay. It will save your life in a certain condition. Wow. Uh, I was talking with um, an uh, anthropologist about how early cordage was made, how uh, early, um, early man uh, made cordage and rope is so useful. Show us your rope bracelet. That is a great way to keep rope. Oh, yeah. An important cordage. This one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a this one is uh, five, five meters. Uh, um, a, I'm sorry, it's a uh, uh, 15 feet of uh, paracord. Paracord is, uh, oh, yeah. Have some here. Yeah. On the rubber knife. This is can keep up uh, to 550 pounds. Uh, so you can climb uh, something with this or uh, descend from um, uh, something you won't fall well, thanks to this. You can start a fire with this because if you unravel all this and you can create uh, an arc and um, you can uh, make a bow drill to start a fire. 
uh, it's something that you need some skill for because it's not uh, easy like uh, on uh, YouTube videos because it's really it's really hard to learn and uh, it will take uh, some uh, determination because uh, it's not like uh, sparks which uh, everyone can do sparks. Uh, making a boat drill is something more complicated, but it, w it will work. Yeah. yeah, but it's interesting uh, how often you see class. a small stick with little holes in it. Oh yeah. Uh, from yes, the that one. That and, one. And, yeah. and archaeological sites yeah. that where they still survive and yeah yeah, yeah interesting. Mm. Yeah, so, I got, and I got tape, a friend of mine which is an anthropologist. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I got a friend of mine which is an anthropologist that, which uh, showed me uh, a few months ago uh, how to start a fire with two uh, with uh, one bamboo cut in half with friction use friction and uh, it was uh, the a system which contains both the tinder so the initial thing that needs to burn and both he has a tool uh, in it to start a fire which uh, is incredible so you, you have uh, everything in uh, one uh, piece of, of dry bamboo which yeah. is incredible it's like having a, a lighter and uh, and the first material to start a fire and uh, he yeah. found this yeah. something and uh, uh, it's interesting how Utsi right the famous ice man how well equipped he was in the Alps yeah. he had a survival kit ago. he had a survival kit yeah he yeah. was the ultimate yeah, yeah literally a survival kit he had this kind of mushroom here if I found it there's oh. a mushroom that can uh, hold the tinder for uh, oh. hours oh. and uh, once you start a fire and he, he had no uh, ferrocerium rod like us. He had a flint, which is uh, really m more complicated uh, than the ferrocerium rod, which makes a lot of sparks, because you need to um, uh, make a friction between uh, an iron, uh, um, a rock full of iron metals, and another one with uh, another metals to start uh, ignition. And uh, it's nothing, it's not something that you can do on a regular basis all day, all day. And if there, if there is moisture in the air, if the climate is humid, it's difficult to set up. So uh, you can start a fire and put a small tinder into this mushroom that oh, I should wow. have here. And because then some you people thought the mushroom it. was medicine, but you're saying it's a holder of a spark. Yeah, so it's holder of a fire. It's start a, fire and is you can bring it around for, for, for miles and he, and uh, hours and it will work oh. where is it why yeah. this it should be this one those are pieces of uh, uh yeah it's a dry mushroom now oh. and uh, it uh, grows on trees it's a tree mushroom the one of uh, okay. like a um, like a shelf uh, i've seen those yeah, 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 exactly, precisely. Uh, I don't yeah. remember the name, but uh, I can know how to use it, and uh, it will burn. I forgot to to extinguish it, and it would burn for uh, from the night from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. And it was a small piece. Uh, uh, and it, when you carry it around, it's not uh, something that you that is uh, uh, you you can't touch because it's uh, burning. Because he has a small, small amber, but with a small amber, like this, these are uh, makeup um, cottons uh, to, to to get rid of the makeup. Uh, you make a fire. You make a fire. Wow. In survival kit nowadays, uh, mm -hmm. we use also tampax uh, for both men and women because they are uh, are cotton basically wrapped in. Um, waterproof uh, uh, wrapping so you can just open it up and uh, burn it and it's uh, like uh, gasoline because it's burned uh, really oh, fast readily. interesting well hmm. Otsi had um, waterproof clothing just made from plant material as well he had a covering he had a spear made of uh, specific woods that oh. had more tensile strength or like 17 different kinds of wood made up his his kit yeah. so they really knew their materials and how best to use them we look at the woods and we don't really understand the intricacies of it but it's fascinating no. to know well, those materials you would know your world if, that intimately that well and how to utilize it to to make pretty much the equivalence although he did not have duct tape yeah, yeah. tell us about duct tape <laughs> <laughs> yeah, duct tape is an easy way. It's a number one uh, helper for survival because uh, 
um, you can carry around not this big bulky thing, but uh, you can uh, wrap it around a pencil, for example, and uh, yes. then you have a pencil to take notes or uh, to write down instruction for uh, anyone which can see your trace because uh, it can happen also that, that thing. And uh, uh, so you can carry around like uh, uh, 15 feet uh, like of this yeah. one. And you, you, it will help you in many different ways. And by the way, you can also burn it. And because if you start to burn it, you will keep the fire for uh, many seconds. Uh, there are, you can tie things together. Uh, you can um, use it however you like. You can make uh, uh, waterproof uh, um, containers with this one. Yeah. Each time, uh, as a photographer, each time uh, there's there is is not a, on the market a bag I need. I created with uh, duct tape. I show you something. Okay. Okay. This one. This one. It's a tripod. Yeah. Uh, special tripod, particular. And this one is the base for the tripod. Uh, I I I, I go try to Google it. Tripod with a base on the tripod, but I don't find anything that uh, fits in my bag. With this one, I have the tripod, the USB cable. It's mm -hmm. focus, yeah. Uh, I, I've done this with duct tape, and uh, it's it's not it's not beautiful, okay. But it's what I needed, and uh, I made it in a matter of minutes, and uh, it's quite sturdy because uh, I got many things I did with paracord. Even uh, uh, sheets for uh, for um, knives. Uh, whenever I, I lose um, a knife sheet, uh, I can temporarily create one with uh, duct tape. Duct tape is yeah. incredible. incredible. Well, we use we, we when we travel yeah. even internationally in today's world of travel, we mm -hmm. we make a small bundle for inside of our luggage because you never know what it's going to break or happen. He's or so proud. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You can fix everything. everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's you magic. said um, you'd mentioned learning to tie knots was one of the first skill sets that you acquired yes. as a boy. So if you don't know how to tie a knot, you're saying duct tape it. Yeah. Would, would <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah there, um, yes. Yes and no because uh, tying a knot, uh, uh, tying a knot, uh, prop, tying knots properly, is good for your safety because because uh, if you know knots, uh, you know how they behave because each knot is different from the other one. Each yeah. knot uh, has a particular Perfect. function and. Uh, Using to know uh, and to create uh, the right knot at the right moment, it's really, it can save you for farther travel because uh, if you mess up with the knot, uh, the, knot it, the knot in itself it can work, but uh, if you have to untangle it, it's uh, a nightmare to untangle a knot that is not meant to be untangled. So, um, uh, knowing the right uh, skills for knot is uh, really important, I guess. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. that could be fun to learn, yeah. all right? So, come, come yeah. back I can tie just... my shoe, but I can advance beyond that, yeah. <laughs> Coming back to a couple of uh, points that were made in the chat room as we went along, uh, Tony, who's an, uh, uh, an astronomer, said, space situational awareness is actually a term used in defense. What yes, is exactly. an enemy yeah. system or also uh, colliding, I'm collision, sorry, collision and avoidance? Advide, avoidance, yeah. yeah. And Jean yeah, said, yeah. knowing yeah. the star, yeah, go ahead. Say it first. It's totally the right. It's totally right because uh, most of the thing uh, we uh, teach in survival of psychology is about situational awareness and uh, uh, even the, uh, terms that Tony might know, like uh, OODA loop or uh, Cooper color code, are something that are super useful uh, in helping you to assess your internal and external situational awareness and to make the right decision. Ooda loop was. Uh, uh, have you seen Top Gun, the, the one in the eighties and uh, the one? On, uh, yeah, Top Gun is based on entirely on uh, is a byproduct of uh, the work of uh, John Boyd, which was a genius, a uh, pioneer in uh, dog fighting. It's called the aerial fights between uh, uh, fighter jets, because he, he he made a theory, he created a theory which is the Ooda, Ooda loop, which uh, is. Observe, orient. Uh, sorry, <laughs> decide and act. Uh, I had a small uh, lapsus, and uh, this uh, is a loop because you can start to or observe the situation, then orient and choose which can be the the right action to take, 
decide and then you uh, have the absolutely uh, one uh, decision to make and then act uh, and then you start that decision then you start back over again and uh, uh, John Boyd which uh, he said also uh, an incredible phrase which, which is something you need to learn that uh, the, the, the one who survives in a fight is the one pilot which can handle the highest rate of change so yeah. that he can change more quickly and right. um, mm -hmm. yeah. the Cooper color code yeah. which so adaptability is um, a key to pivot yeah. on your feet yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, and that sort of comes back to modern day psychology, which we had touched on in that it's useful. How, go ahead. You're saying that assessing one's advantages, one's disadvantages, one's vulnerabilities yes. gives you the edge. And you're quoting. Yes. It's of paramount importance to realize uh, how is your mental state and your uh, external state, because if you got situational awareness, for the surrounding and for what's in you, uh, so your um, your state of mind, your attention, it's uh, really very important because uh, uh, knowing that you are not 100% uh, on what's surrounding you, it's an advantage because so that, that you realize, everyone thinks that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here, I'm 100% in the situation while I'm texting, this is a mistake because it's a false belief. It's, you're, if you are texting, you're not on, uh, on the spot on whatever is surrounding you. Right. And uh, choosing to widen your focus, it's uh, an exercise that uh, we do in the courses because uh, um, even jet pilot uh, unlearn to uh, be 100% on focus uh, on uh, something because uh, um, there's an end whenever they need to uh, get back on the uh, I don't know what's the name of uh, the ship with um, flight uh, Porta Aire, it's a uh, uh, flight carriers oh, yeah. the, 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 you, the, the ships yeah, yeah. If, if they focus too much on, on that small strip uh, they will uh, lose the attention on the surrounding so they need to balance the attention on one single bit of information and the other 360, 364 degrees, 359 degrees. Because if you have tunnel vision, yeah, sometimes it can be useful. Sometimes you need to be aware of the surrounding. So, okay. Uh, last Sunday's guest, Jeff Dunn, says that the mind over matter or mind with matter experiments that his mom was involved with at Princeton was inspired or funded initially by McDonnell Douglas because they found that fighter jets in high stress situations, their technology is affected by their own stress level. Uh, yeah, Do you yeah. find that? Yes, yes, he is right, totally right. It's, uh, he's, he's summarizing the work of uh, John Boyd, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he made a theory and a paper, a university paper on this, because uh, uh, it's exactly like this. Uh, you, if you can take decision in a split second that can uh, literally move your body into miles and miles in a matter of uh, seconds, uh, if you are faster than your opponent, then you're on the edge, then you're the winner. because. Uh, uh, really, it wins we has the highest rate of change because mm -hmm. uh, not not the strongest. Think about the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs didn't survive. Uh, uh, they were the strongest uh, inhabitant of the earth, I guess, but they didn't survive a meteor because they could not uh, adapt uh, easily like small mammals. Yeah, brain yeah, over brawn. It's, it's, it's a bit <laughs> of a paradox, but uh, it's, we also it's more to had... explain this par comparison model. We also had Cam, um, who was a former police officer, who, when this topic came up in the past, says, okay, you yeah. have to have eyes in the back of your head. You develop a sixth sense of the mm -hmm. dangers around you right. or situational awareness. That's also taught, of right. course, with among the uh, police. And he said that you really have a sixth sense to follow your gut, trust it. Mm -hmm. You find that, I'm sure, as well. No. Yes, that is the next level. As a police officer, uh, I think uh, he, he, it was uh, important for his life to develop this sixth sense. 
being exposed uh, frequently in this kind of situation you might have as a police officer, I think, uh, I never did that, but, but I think that will make you develop the eyes behind your head because uh, um, situational awareness, it's not uh, focusing on, uh, on your target. It's focusing on your target and what's surrounding you because you can take a bullet, uh, not in the direction you might think, but in another one. Yeah. Uh, think about uh, prestige, uh, the, the game um, uh, magicians. Magicians make uh, your attention only in one point and they do other things uh, wh while you're not watching. That's uh, exactly what you need to avoid. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Focusing your attention on one point. Situational well, awareness is being uh, where 360 degrees. What, so, what, so what you're touching on here is really fundamental and that is, uh, first of all, present moment experiences has become uh, something that we have to get back to, both in the world of uh, that we, we, we travel with uh, the, the posture work, which seems to open a doorway to living back into yeah. a present moment. But also what you're talking about also mm -hmm. seems to um, mean that we are also losing some of that sixth sense. Like just yesterday, we were having lunch with a friend and the person was saying, you know, I'm really frustrated with the fact that I'm, I used to always be able to navigate new things, but I've become so dependent on GPS, I'm so dependent on this technology and that technology that I'm losing something that I don't, I, you know, in some and ways, did that, and mm -hmm. it's not just him, it's the humanity as a whole. Are we losing some skill sets that you're talking about, that sixth sense, that um, because we've gotten so dependent that as soon as the internet goes off, we don't know what to do with our lives. <laughs> you know, we've gotten so, so dependent on this technology. Yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, I was thinking that we are, I don't know if it's on topic, but we are doing something with our upcoming courses because uh, uh, we'll be the first in Italy to uh, create survival courses for disabled people. Uh, because uh, my thought was that uh, everyone could be disabled of uh, some skill set. Right. And uh, one thing well, I will do, and yeah. uh, one thing I will do, and uh, I do frequently in uh, the advanced course is uh, to blindfold people and to have them walk from point A to point B with someone that can catch them if they fall. But it will tremendously increase your awareness, your sense of proprioception. Uh, each step then will be meaningful. You don't walk like just one foot after the other. If you don't have your eyes, or if your eyes are temporarily disabled, you will walk with your ears you yes. will, uh, listen at the sounds that your feet will make uh, uh, if it's on a branch uh, which is cracking or if it's uh, something else if it's on the mud uh, mm -hmm. you will uh, you will orient yourself with your smell it, it, uh, you need to, uh, yeah. yes exactly exactly you need to, uh, we need to um, get back with to nature to hone your our uh, skill our, and our senses to be one with the nature because uh, and I, one exercise that maybe some of you have uh, might have done is uh, hike alone and uh, uh, spend the night alone in the woods yes uh, it, you, you will uh, experience that uh, your uh, your vision is not in front of you it's uh, really 360 degrees because you 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 visualize uh, the branches cracking visualize the bird going uh, on your back and uh, everything that's surrounding you um, and now in these days we are we have really developed uh, uh, a detachment uh, from sociality from uh, contact with other beings thanks to social networks and uh, whatever is not in the in the reality and uh, and then we need to get back to that because uh, once you are back in your senses, in your body, in your moment, uh, right here and right now, and in your whole of uh, wholeness of your senses, then you have the edge. Okay. I, I believe our senses are picking up all that information all the time, but we're filtering it to what we're focused on or our intellect can, can handle. But I think that's why the gut is so important. Our intuition is so important because it's processing so much more than just our main senses alone. We've got mm. so many senses that, that are reading data all the time. That's right. Yeah. That's right. right. That's right.
I think shamanic practice in this can uh, create another uh, edge because uh, uh, you start to pay attention. First of all, yeah. Uh, first of all, you resize your ego, which is a uh, number one enemy in survival because uh, uh, admitting that you made a mistake, uh, maybe a huge one, uh, it's something that you it's really hard to uh, digest and to process oh. yeah. because there's something you, you took the wrong way uh, and you say, no, I'm convinced it's this way. I need to go on this, this way. So I'm sure that if I stuck on this way, I will go to, and you disorient yourself even more. And then your uh, shamanism will put in perspective and uh, will resize yourself and your ego and uh, shamanic practice is a, I think is a great exercise for, uh, thinking that you you are nothing in the universe but a tiny piece of the whole. And, yes. Um, <laughs> and even um, it can make you develop uh, your senses because uh, when you travel, uh, it's pure senses. You don't have a, a cell phone in your shamanic travel, I right. think. Right. You don't have a, a internet connection. You don't have a... And it's just you and what's surrounding you, just uh, like it was, uh, uh, like it has been since 2000, uh, 2000 year, 200,000 years uh, since the beginning of uh, mankind. So uh, yeah. our senses are, uh, yeah. are, are something we need to rely on again and uh, again. Just, just to be clear, can, can you tell us your definition of shaman, shamanism, a shamanic practice? What do you mean by shamanic practice? Can I have some water? Yeah. Each time you uh, travel in a different uh, state of uh, reality, mm -hmm. in a non-ordinary reality, like Arner say, uh, I think you are resized. You are resized and you are really you can observe uh, in perspective and with a proper scale of uh, what you are and uh, what's around you what's uh, uh, what's the universe and uh, how how small are you and uh, being genuinely humble when you deal with uh, something bigger than you is something that you can carry in nature as well because uh, uh, Nature owes you nothing. Uh, nature is not there for you. Uh, like uh, we are forced to think uh, after the illuminism, uh, the, the age of reason, uh, as they called it. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's hard to explain because they are, they are, it's metaphysical. Yes. So it, it's something difficult to find a word for this. But uh, I think. Uh, Shamanic practice uh, is really connected. Uh, it can be connected to survival because uh, uh, whenever you you uh, are right here, right now, it's a good exercise, like mindfulness. You yeah. don't have to shoot at uh, the range to be a good survivalist. You need to be mindful. Uh, I know many people in the, like a France Foreign Legion, Special Corps, uh, and they are the quietest people in the world. They are really calm. Each time I take the car in Milan, I yell, I scream because it's frenetic. They are calm. They are like monks, really, because they <laughs> they, they have seen they have seen true bullets flying uh, around you, yeah. uh, around them, and sometimes they hit. Uh, and, and so they they know they have a, a scale of stress which is different than uh, yes. the one you can have. So the term uh, emotional uh, nerves, resilience, nerves of steel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, nerves to see them. That's the perfect I've had definition. Family members, military family yeah. members, they just have that. Uh, they don't get shook up. It takes a lot to to disturb them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I also know you have some slides and some some images to share with us today, and that was some fan, stories. To some share. stories to share as well. Real life adventure stories. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the adventures yeah. as well. Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have uh, some here. Oh, um, some here that concerns uh, the travel. Uh, this is about nature, the nature we can find that uh, can uh, can be scaring uh, sometimes. But uh, once you get accustomed to it, it's uh, really uh, once you are there in the moment, you know how to handle uh, most everything. 
This is Nairobi. It's uh, warthog, and uh, they, they can be dangerous, but they, they are you. You can learn how to keep them away. Spiders, uh, spiders are are something you need to. Uh, spiders and scorpions, something that they are so small that. Uh, yeah. This is a scroll of a uh, water buffalo, and this is uh, something we found on the seashore in uh, Kenya. Uh, uh, we didn't eat it because uh, in our survival trip we don't uh, uh, we don't uh, hunt because uh, you, you need to have hunting permission and uh, and because uh, we need to pass the message that survival it's not about hunting because uh, um, your your needs are really having a great shelter starting the fire and drinking hunting uh, uh, eating is something you can um, do uh, for you'll need for uh, for weeks uh, uh, so uh, okay, that's not the best time of your life if you don't if you don't need uh, yeah. if you don't eat every day but uh, but you can survive definitely uh, those are elephants we found uh, nearby the lake natron which is a, an incredible lake uh, in uh, between tanzania and kenya those are uh, antelopes uh, and uh, Thompson antelopes uh, running away from the drones. Those are flamingos, uh, yes. which are the only one that can survive in Lake Natron. We are in another lake uh, nearby and uh, spiders, wow. this is a spider. Uh, it's like a, it's something like a, quite um, quite unbelievable to me I'm as well. Assuming. What? Quite poisonous, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know. Scorpions are. This one is was quite poisonous because uh, um, he has a small claws. Uh, each time they have a small claws, they has a, a big uh, biting, um, a big sting. So uh, they are quite poisonous. These are donkeys, simply uh, close to the water. Uh, these are, I have my maybe another few ones to share because uh, those are hikes and. Uh, it was a survival trek in a place uh, in a really a wild place in Italy. It's uh, called Val Grande, and uh, it's a place in which you can can't hike with a guide because it's really, really, really dangerous. Because it's steep, it's full of water. You can sleep in a matter of second, uh, and uh, it's really something uh, that you can underestimate. It, uh, it makes a lot of deaths. It's a uh, death count. It's uh, really on a monthly basis because uh, a year people uh, uh, they didn't put a cell phone network in uh, Val Grande because with cell phone they doubled the, the, the death count because uh, uh -huh. uh, people weren't aware of what they are doing and they made them four steps and they, they bonked their head uh, on a rock and they died because uh, first time we went there there was a guy who was uh, dead and they stopped the whole valley they started the search and rescue thermal drones uh, uh, dogs and everything and it uh, was uh, really something let me so i didn't start the slideshow i'm sorry technology it always fails okay it's and uh, here yeah even orienteering it's difficult here with a map and uh, we had a guide here because uh, we are the only one authorized to uh, be in uh, this uh, particular park and uh, starting fires and uh, working. And this guy, which is, uh, this one is a 73 year old, year old guy named Renato, which we all love him. And yes. the last time we went here, he, uh, we get lost with a guide because it's so difficult to orient yourself. And, and uh, the mistake we made, it's like uh, uh, 20 meters, which is like 60 feet, 60 feet from one, uh, um path to the other and uh, we completely uh, got another valley and uh, we got kids as well with us uh we don't have age limits because uh, uh survival is uh, i mean it's not something just for uh rambles it's something that uh, <laughs> if you are really, really in a survival situation i think my father is 85 years old uh, I, I i need to cope with uh, something that has not my uh, my stride when I walk. Uh, uh, it's something social because, uh, okay, you can get yourself uh, in trouble by yourself if you go alone in the woods, but uh, uh, how many times we go alone in the woods? We go with, uh, with uh, friends, uh, with families, and, uh, and with people of uh, different physical condition. Uh, we are not all, always uh, top athletes.
Yeah. And uh, so uh, simple, <laughs> that's my simple consideration because, uh, uh, because uh, the, you know, you know uh, survival. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is, uh, they are starting a fire on the snow and uh, was, uh, they made it, uh, by the way, because uh, uh, mastering fire is uh, one of the best skills you can, uh, I, I mean, um, for most of the people, uh, in this field, uh, it's uh, quite easy to master fire, but uh, really, um, human, uh, human species is 51% uh, urban. So, in uh, all, I mean, like four billions of people uh, are living in uh, right now in uh, cities. How many times you have started a fire in a city? In a city. So, uh, let's say that at least 4 million billion of people don't know properly how to start a fire because they don't have a necessity. Uh, I live in a city, my son at school is not uh, taught how to start a fire. <laughs> uh, they, they say, they, they tell me him how to not start a fire, how to don't play with fire and, and stuff like that. They don't know how to master a fire. Oh, there's a school of a monkey we found in uh, Savannah and uh, yeah. These are uh, Kenya again, Savannah. This is uh, walking down a road in uh, in Kenya, and uh, we we face uh, every possible environment to to train ourselves uh, with the proper skill to survive and to adapt uh, to the environment. By the way, the most dangerous environment I think in the city, because mm -hmm. uh, in the city you can you can be mugged easily. You can be everything can happen. The only yeah. worst thing that happened to me were in uh, no, but fifty percent of the worst thing that happened to me were in the cities, like uh, car crashes, uh, right, and everything. right, and even muggers, uh, burglars. I went in Paris once. I was uh, uh, they pickpocketed me like the, the pocket and. Uh, yeah, uh, in, in the metro, uh, cities are dangerous. Yeah, nature, nature is not that dangerous once uh, once you know how to deal with it. Yeah. Drinking water from uh, agave. Yeah, yeah, from, uh, yeah. from uh, the agave. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And, uh, oh yeah, drawn the red uh, uh, soil of uh, Kenya. It's so unbelievable, mm. and. Uh, we were on the top of the mountain. This is Mount Kazigao in uh, Kenya. It's not that high, but uh, it's really jungle, jungle, black jungle. And then again, Val Grande. And, uh, yeah. You again. have a mind map. Can you show us your mind map as oh, well? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because the mind map kind of gives us more of the def definition and the, the depth of the work that you're doing. Um, so, yeah, uh -huh. let's take a look. Oh, this is when we spoke with uh, Laura uh, months ago, um, yes. uh, you know, um, I wrote um, many books. Uh, one of the which has been published, uh, another one next year. But I, I really, um, it's years I'm thinking with my map because uh, I'm not uh, X, Y, uh, two dimensional guy that can think on a linear fashion. Right. I think really three dimensionally and uh, uh, there are many connections between uh, subjects and uh, whenever you do uh, something uh, that can fit on a chart uh, uh, and has no connection, deeper connection, you, I think you, you can limit yourself. So uh, I, I made this about survival psychology to summarize uh, the main uh, features of survival psychology. Well, you have uh, positivity, not optimism, and the stock yes, index. Exactly. Could you explain that? That's, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, it's called the Stockdale Paradox because um, there was a journalist, I don't remember the name of the journalist, which interviewed James Stockdale, which was the highest rank uh, official ever uh, imprisoned in an imprisonment camp in uh, Vietnam that uh, they ask him, which are the ones uh, who die first in the imprisonment camp? If yes. uh, without any doubts, he said, the optimists. Uh, and the journalists would say, what? The optimists? Yes, because they, they uh, delayed their um, 
their presence. I mean, they will have expectation about the future. They don't leave the moment. They will say, oh, come on, next week they will uh, catch up. Uh, they will bring us uh, home. Uh, we will see. And then next week they didn't bring them home. In a couple of weeks, maybe they will bring us home. A couple of weeks passed, and uh, they were still there. The constant disappointment Later, of not having their expectations. Yeah, they had the constant disappointment. Yeah. 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 You don't have to be optimistic, like everything will be fa fine, everything will go well. No, you will say, I will do the best I can to mm -hmm. make the thing go in the right direction, <sighs> but I will live uh, day by day, and I will not cease fighting. I will keep on uh, fighting. That, that's what you need. To be to have to. So the positivity of believing in yourself, believe. believing in that you have a chance, yes. believing in that you can, yes. you can prevail, that you can sustain yes. what you're doing enough to, to succeed. And maybe the most important is that ability to adapt, to make the shift and say, I don't know what it's going to take, but I know that I will do that, whatever it takes to survive. I will take the steps Precisely. necessary. So yeah, it's the motto of the Marines. Being, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the motto of the Marines, improvise, adapt, overcome. Improvise because if, there's, if something bad happens, you don't have it planned. So right. it's everything about improvisation. And the ability to improvise, adapt, to adapt yourself in the moment at the situation and to overcome, step by step, to overcome uh, what's in front of you. Because adaptation, uh, uh, think about uh, the first days of uh, pandemic. We uh, denial is a common thing in every field. When, yes. when, whenever you're in a car crash, say no, that's not possible. Is this not happening to me? You are denying. In the first day of COVID, yeah, but it will. It's just a flu. Everyone say it's just a flu. It will, we will uh, in a month. It will be gone. Yes. <laughs> So, so the state of denial is something you need to uh, avoid. And this particular year in Italy, uh, we are uh, optimistic. Uh, we tend to be optimistic and uh, providentialist. And we we'll say, um, especially in the southern Italy, uh, we will say, um, uh, God will think about it. <laughs> it, won't. it won't. Trust me, it won't. So you need to think about yourself. And uh, if God will help you, then uh, bless him. But, uh, but you need to think about yourself. Nothing will uh, uh, improvise, adapt, overcome. It's perfect. It's, uh, uh, three is the perfect number for, uh, for what you need. And uh, so I listed all the things that you need to learn, practice, and repeat. Briefing, uh, box briefing. Another thing that uh, comes from... Uh, from uh, the US, it's uh, particularly by, uh, I don't remember his name, it's, uh, I'm sorry because he's one of my idols. Um, he, he created the box breathing, uh, box which breathing. is uh, uh, you take uh, four seconds to inhale. Yes. You take four seconds to pause, yeah. four seconds to exhale, and then four seconds to pause. With this, which is practice, uh, they say, even in the, uh, uh, the U.S. government uh, police, yeah. um, it will calm you down instantly because uh, it will uh, alter your uh, parasympathetic nervous system versus uh, sympathetic nervous system. Then, oh, uh, interesting, down, because relax. that's our breathing technique. You've just described we have a five-minute breathing technique in our in our ritual. Perfect. That's perfect. And that yeah. good yeah. Yeah. It, it, will, it will ground you. It will uh, quiet. Uh, I, I, I saved the life because of this, because uh, I, I was in a crash. Uh, I, I made a tourniquet with a belt uh, of a guy who broke a, a vein and uh, was bleeding, bleeding and bleeding. Uh, but even if I, I made a, a decent tourniquet, uh, like uh, compressing his uh, veins, uh, avoiding that he was uh, losing a lot of blood, uh, he was still hyperventilating because uh, he was guilty because he was in the opposite direction and I really wasn't there to 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 tend to him but it was them to punch him because uh, I was uh, totally okay and he was wrong but said this uh, I needed to say in his life and uh, I said you need to relax brief with me yeah. I made him brief for like uh, one minute and he's uh, like uh, <laughs> 
uh, and his heart was breathing, uh, uh, beating uh, so fast, and he was uh, bleeding a lot. And w without, I couldn't have uh, compressed enough uh, with my hands so, and with the tourniquet, and it will, it will uh, bled to death. So uh, this is thanks to the breathing, because uh, and, uh, listen to me and say, I, I will punch you in the face later. Relax, <laughs> I will not gonna punch you in the face now. So. Let's save you first, and then I can punch it, you. So. Um, yeah. So breathe. Well, I save you first, then uh, after the hospital, we'll talk about. It. Yeah. yeah. So just the various techniques of breathing, uh, because you can downshift, upshift your own physiology. So if you need to get warm, you could do some fire yes. breathing and get your blood moving faster and get your metabolism up. If you want to calm down, then you do uh, this other slow rhythmic breathing. Right. Four seconds. Four seconds. That's it shifts us time. into the present moment. You've done moment. our technique with us. Yeah, so sure. You yeah. know that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's grounding. It's grounding. Yeah. yeah. Com coming back to your uh, chart here, uh, there's many, I'm sure that we can yeah. take hours, but we won't be able to do that today. But some of the key, uh -huh. elements, I, somebody did ask, what is uh, uh, Cooper, Cooper Co Color, Color Code? Code? I was curious. Did Dave ask that question? Oh, yeah. Right? Cooper Color Code. But yeah. That one I was uh, speaking before. Uh, self-assessment on uh, your internal situation and the uh, uh, external situation. If I am, let's say I'm walking with a cell phone, I don't know what's happening to me, I'm in uh, white code. If I am a bit more aware of what's surrounding, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a cell phone with me and uh, uh, I'm start looking around, I'm in yellow color code. Then when in orange color code, I, I I'm, might realize that uh, I, is there something that I need to concern? And with red color code, uh, I, I, there is a threat, and I, I know that can be the option to fight this uh, threat. So in black color code, it's pure fight, and uh, that's it. Cooper didn't create the black color code, but it's I think it's an ad, nice uh, ad uh, they made. Uh, for that because uh, uh so the national aware, also... system that we have for high alerts or low alerts we can apply to ourselves and assess our own our yes. own absolutely absolutely self-assessment you can find everything on the web Uda loop you can find really something uh even in business uh as a business model you uh, the loop it's used uh Cooper color code uh, it's used by all the special forces and uh, even police officers. Uh, box breathing is ubiquitary because uh, it's really something that you need to master. Once you master your breath and you're aware of the situation, you really have a great advantage of what is happening. Because, uh, you know, whenever you have a high breath rate, uh, you, are, uh, you can't cope with stress, you can't... Uh, uh, chill down to be right here uh, in the moment. Um, you, uh, your nervous system. Uh, you, you, we have a balance between uh, uh, parasympathetic nervous system and uh, uh, sympathetic nervous system. Whenever we have this balance in favor of sympathetic nervous system, that means that we are more prone to fight or flight reaction. Fight or flight reaction is something that we need. Uh, we made uh, out of our chest. It's nothing uh, in which we think and st stop and plan. Whenever we don't need to uh, have this uh, fight or flight reaction, fight or flight or freeze reaction, we are more in, uh, um, in favor of the feed or breed reaction, so-called, so uh, in the parasympathetic nervous system. That means uh, that we have less cortisol in our bloodstream Cortisol is the hormone that uh, can stop our uh, uh, rational process. Because uh, uh, sometimes we don't need to be rational if we, we have to run, but we need to rationalize when we need to run. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a famous uh, book uh, that says, uh, its title is, whatever you do, you don't run. It's uh, from a South African, South African uh, guide because this is a correct uh, behavior in front of a lion, because uh, if you yeah. are in front of a lion, it's very difficult to, to, cook, to be chill and uh, to, 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 to tell your body, uh, stop here, stop here, because if you run, the lion says, it is a prey, and yeah. I'm going to chase it, and I'm going to eat it. 
Whatever you do, and, don't run. Yeah. yeah. Sorry? Oh, I said, whatever you yeah, do, what, don't you run. run. Yeah, exactly. Don't become the prey. Don't act yeah. like prey. Yeah. Run of a lion. In a situation, uh, if uh, there is a nipple, a hippopotamus, you'd have to run, absolutely. Uh, you can't run in, but you will gain the last uh, moment of your life uh, running. Or uh, you didn't can start climbing on a tree if uh, the hippo don't throw down a tree. Uh, with, uh, um, with, a, uh, with a lion, it's uh, uh, the least thing you can do because uh, mm -hmm. it will chase you. Yeah. It, it's yeah. counterintuitive, but if you start running towards the lion, uh, making yourself big and yelling at the lion, the lion say, uh, this, this guy here is crazy. Or he's going to be crazy. This is, a, this, <laughs> this is I don't something. understand this. I can't deal to with him. Startle him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because the fight in nature is, uh, the, the, um, yeah. they don't fight like, uh, yeah, I, I chopped the... Uh, a paw off of you, and uh, but I will kill you. And is, they need to have a clean kill because uh, uh, whenever they have injuries, they, have, they don't have a veterinary service to, for them to 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 cure them. So uh, the lions uh, rarely get themselves into fights where in which they got injuries. If they there's something unknown for them. Uh, they, they tend to be conservative, so they, uh, uh, I will run. Away. They run away. I didn't experiment this by myself, but I, I, and I hope I will never have the occasion uh, for that. Uh, I, hyenas, I, I met the hyenas, lions. So I never met them. And uh, by the way, I will not experiment to myself gladly this thing, this technique. Yeah. You have also I'm there sorry. learn and repeat right? A skills. Yes. What are a handful of the skills? I would say not making, maybe making fire, right? What are some of the skills that in our leisure time, it might be a fun thing to do, um, a, a nice skill to have just because you never know. I'm going to uh, look at not, yeah. not tying. It sounds like okay. fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm, oh, starting fires. There are so many techniques to start a fire that uh, they are fun. Even if you have a barbecue uh, with your friend and uh, you will make a, uh, like a time schedule uh, self igniting uh, fire which is e the easiest thing to do i teach them to kids uh, uh, in uh, kids camps uh, and uh, it's really something that wow this guy is uh, so, uh, it's something you can do for fun um, starting fire with a lens with a um, w w solar fire uh, starting fire with a battery and a, a thin piece of metal, starting fire with, uh, uh, with, with bow and drill, you need to learn a lot, but uh, with, uh, with sparks like, like this, it's uh, uh, really something uh, mm -hmm. you can learn. Because uh, maybe, uh, speaking about a barbecue, everyone has a, a fire started for barbecue. What about if you use everything natural? Uh, for your friend, you you can t knowledge can be spread. You, if you teach your friends how to start a fire with a, a small kin, uh, tinders and uh, embers and making a fire, just just with uh, one spark and with the proper te technique, you will uh, ignite a huge fire and uh, can be fun. Potabilization of water, sterilization of water is another thing that uh, it's super, super useful because uh, if you travel to foreign countries and uh, uh, if you drink tap water like in India or in Africa or in, uh, or in third world country, you most likely get some disease because... Uh, um, you should boil that water. Yeah. You should boil the water. If you can't boil the water, if you use uh, like uh, this one which is, uh, looks like a normal uh, mm -hmm. canteen, but it's uh, something that you will uh, filter your uh, water by pressing it and is a, has a filter inside of it that will make your uh, water drinkable. Even, uh, even drink a puddle uh, with a, a corpse of a dead animal uh, in it with uh, this, or, or even uh, water filtration and water sterilization, or, or maybe, water with uh, chloride uh, pills uh, or uh, there, there are uh, some uh, tools. Uh, you can sterilize water in a pet uh, 
in, in, in a PET uh, bottle, uh, like plastic bottle, transparent, keeping it at, at the sun for like six, seven hours in a oh, tropical really? climate. Yeah, yeah, water is sterilized. Yeah, yeah. You need to move it a lot because uh, you will uh, penetrate better and uh, the plastic must be really thin because it, uh, it's blocking uh, part of the UV. But UV are, are mm -hmm. a great way to sterilize. It should be like running in front of a UV light or something. Yeah. I That's, got a UV that, sterilizer yeah. a year. Yeah. Yeah. This one, uh, it's uh, something, it's technological. I mean, uh, I, I'm saying it this, but uh, uh, don't rely on technology. This is called a SeriPen. It's uh, something you put in, uh, in a water bottle and mm -hmm. then you press a button and it will uh, make UVA, which uh, will sterilize immediately in a matter of uh, 10 seconds, uh, whatever is in it. I drink really the worst water I, you can imagine uh, here, and it was uh, safe. I didn't take a uh, Jardia or uh, some mm -hmm. other diseases in Africa. I use it a lot, this one. Uh, it was like Palu. I couldn't even filter. I didn't have time. I was dehydrated. I just uh, filtered it uh, with bandana, but it was like uh, oh, tell uh, me water about your bandana. Chocolate. You say ah, that the bandana. bandana is one of the easiest and most useful tools going. Tell us about yes. that. This really, you can use it to uh, cool down your head. Simply, uh, if you put it on your head and with some water, it will uh, prevent you from heat stroke, which is uh, one of the most dangerous thing in uh, warm climates. You can use it to, to uh, uh, maybe a bigger one than this, to, or like uh, this one. This one is widely used because uh, this uh, is a shemag or a kefia in a Middle Eastern country. This one has no uh, particular sign because this uh, um, is uh, originated, I think, in Middle Eastern country. And uh, sometimes its color can have a meaning. I chose to have one which has no meaning so that it can keep a low profile. But this one, you can uh, block uh, uh, an arm. You can wrap it if you uh, spray um, like an um, elbow or a, if you break uh, an arm, you will hold it in position. You can filter the water with this. Uh, with bandana, it's perfect filtering the water because whenever you uh, put, uh, it will not filter like uh, bacteria or viruses because it's just a mechanical filter. Mm -hmm. Because it, but if you pass here uh, by, by applying it multiple times, uh, uh, the water will be uh, more and more filtrated, so it will be more pleasant. And by the way, if you use first this and then this, you will save uh, uh, a life, a uh, uh, usable life for the filter, because uh, the cleanest the water you put in this filter, uh, mm -hmm. the longer it will uh, work without that breaking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there are, I have many gadgets here that you can, uh, let me ch ch change the cameras. Uh, yeah. yeah, bandana is one of the favorite, but uh, even the multi-tools uh, here, uh, the cotton uh, for Tinder, even the normal matches are a great uh, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, light, a torch like this, you can make uh, signals with uh, light. Uh, mm -hmm. At night time is useful. The first one is a metal blanket because uh, metal blanket really it's uh, something uh, I have in the cars. Uh, I have a, at home, uh, I have many because uh, I'm with my girlfriend, with my son and stuff. Uh, uh, the temperature may drop uh, instantly and, uh, and so uh, with that one, uh, you will save your life. Once I was in Norway, I made a huge mistake because uh, I misread the temperature and uh, I really was in a life or that situation in the middle of Norway at um, the end of December. It was really, uh, I marked the Earth's temperature because, uh, yeah, am I still sharing screen? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, go, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I was in the middle of November. I misread the temperature. Uh, I was uh, um, minus uh, 22 Fahrenheit, so it was really, really uh, right. cold. And uh, uh, my... Um, uh, my sleeping, black, my sleeping bag wasn't fit up to that temperature, so I was saved just by uh, with the metal blanket. 
because it will keep my warmth and uh, I, I, I pass the night. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, and so, speaking uh, of that, I have a question. So my yes. sister tells the story of a friend that she had in Sun Valley who went out to a party out in the country, country yes. road, had an accident, slipped off the road. I mean, it's ice and snow in the winter. I mean, a lot of ice and yeah. snow. Crashed the car, couldn't get, got out of the car, started to walk, collapse, died. By the time they found him the next morning, he was frozen through. So what would you do if your car is disabled, you're too far from a road to walk to, to town, um, or I guess nobody came. I mean, he, I think he expected somebody to come by, but maybe at 3 a.m. they weren't. And so he froze to death uh, right there. Would you make a fire? Would you stay in your car? Your car is going to lower the temperature, right? Car's not going to. I mean, it's severely cold. Uh, so she was just like, "What could he have done?" Uh, uh, have got rid there, of the of seats all, with an electric uh, with ahead. a space blanket. But yeah. barring that, yeah. Uh, if you have a knife, you can uh, chop off the seats and burn the seats. The seats will, won't burn forever, but. Uh, at least uh, it will keep you warm for uh, some times. You can build a shelter. You can build a shelter and start a fire. A shelter won't insulate for the environment, but if you make a huge fire uh, and uh, you have something that you made that you reflect the, the fire towards you, you will really be fine. It depends on the wind, it depends on, on many things. Uh, but uh, definitely I will uh, burn the seat of uh, the car and uh, maybe the tires of the car. If oh, the yeah. car not is, in the car because you've got a gas tank. I wouldn't want to put fire, but you drag them off and, and make a bonfire because that's easier than wet snow-covered wood or something or what? Yeah. I mean, that's a difficult really, one. Making a fire is something that uh, in 90% of the situation, it will uh, attract the attention to you and uh, it will make you warmer. Uh, it depends on the wind because uh, it's another factor that can be really dangerous because, you know, there's a wind chill factor table that uh, can yeah. make you realize how much the wind is chilling you. I mean, if, if you are on a normal uh, temperature, not freezing, but the wind is blowing really strong, it will dehydrate you like you have no idea how much you can dehydrate you and how much heat will uh, convey out of you and uh, yeah. will drain out of you and uh, uh, freezing is a matter of uh, hours it de depends on the situation uh, yeah. there, there's no right answer or wrong answer but by the way starting a fire and keeping uh, working it's uh, very important finding a shelter maybe the, you can use a natural shelter uh, thing uh, if you know where the where the wind is blowing the direction of the wind is blowing you may find a small crevice or uh, a small uh, hole in the ground in which you can stay and start a small fire it, it depends it really depends it depends on at least where the these car are. kit you know go well, i mean if you're driving in snow country and dependent on a vehicle and that vehicle fails. I mean, you better have some backup with the you. space blanket that he already shown. The space blanket in yeah. the car, which takes up no space. Space blanket. Uh, I mean, something to start a fire. Stand, uh, some, Those two things. Some tinder or some uh, material to start a fire, because uh, some, uh, there's one thing that not always you can find dry wood to start a yeah. fire. Then it's true. But you can start a fire. You can burn your tires. Your tires uh, will be great in some situation because because. Uh, uh, the tires of the car make a black, thick smoke. And uh, if there's not much wind, and um, if they are searching for you, and they, they see the spot a column of uh, black smoke, they will get there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, he, it was in the middle of the night sure. all this happened. Yeah. And then, in the of middle course, of the night, it's better to have a white smoke, maybe. In the yeah. middle of the night, you better have a, a white smoke. The way smoke is easier to do because you need to burn something that's full of water. But uh, if you burn something full of water, you need to have a strong fire because 
uh, evaporation will drain heat from the fire. So, um, the yeah. other thing is um, flash floods, and there's flash floods around here. And so I actually um, ordered this online, a tool that you can break your window, cut yeah. your seatbelt and break your window it's if a... you are submerged in water mm -hmm. and the water's that's pressing great. against the windshield and you can't open the door. So that's, that's great, but there's, um, there are two models. The one which is like a hammer. Yeah. Okay, and it works if you're not under underwater. I mean, if you're moving with a hammer underwater, you're moving very slowly. Even if it has a point, it might not penetrate and destroy the, the glass instantaneously. Right. There are some which has a sort of ballistic movement, which has a trigger inside oh. and they quickly move uh, uh, like a pin. Yeah. And, uh, oh, uh, interesting. And they will, uh, uh, they tested on a survival uh, um, the program on Netflix, uh, which is uh, Southern Survival. Which is yeah. funny. They are testing uh, gears, and uh, uh, one of the first uh, episodes they tested this one, and uh, I bought one after seeing that one because uh, it's something that can happen. Uh, uh, if yeah. not, uh, you have it, and it's uh, five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Robert makes the point. Yeah, but people keep those kinds of tools in the trunk, <laughs> which is yeah. kind of a mistake. Oh. Yeah. 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 The, 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 the most important thing. The most important thing sir, is, is that you need to practice the sequence in which you grab this and put it on the window because uh, when you are in a dire situation, a horrible situation, you, there are moments in which you can't think. Yeah. Uh, so you need to be able uh, automatically. Even in martial arts, uh, they say that uh, before learning a technique, you have to practice this uh, technique at least 5,000 times. Uh, maybe not 5,000 times, but, but uh, mm -hmm. You need to practice uh, some skill many, many times uh, so your body to become your second nature. So your body can go into action because it might be yeah, yeah, yeah. that you have. Yeah, yeah. So. Whenever you don't think, your body will do automatically the right thing. Yeah. Uh, if you have learned it. Who yeah. else has some uh, interesting comments, questions? Um, uh, well, Tony's asking, you know, Fabrizio, could you give us a list of kits? Like, like, the things that we need for a car, for travel, for backpacking, et cetera. Is that on your website? Is there some kind of information available or something you would like to assemble for us to share with people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Survival kits depends on um, where yeah. you have a survival kit. Yeah. Uh, I'm a fan of survival kit, but you need to truly know uh, really what you have on your survival kit. And uh, which is not my case in this case, because I found the one survival kit of the gears we pack for uh, the guys and uh, uh, we change it once a week each time with workers. Uh, I, here I got a, a tin in which I, um, uh, there is a small pocket, like a military pocket. I got a bandana, I got a space blanket, I got maybe a compass here because uh, orientation is uh, really important as a skill you need to master. You know, I moved it. I got this one, which is uh, another thing uh, super useful. It's like a tubular uh, hat. Yeah. You can use it uh, to cover your head. You can use it to cover your mouth. If uh, you're in between the smoke, something smoke, it will make you breathe uh, um, um, a little better for some times. You can use it as a filter. Uh, there are so many uses for, for this uh, that uh, unprotection. Yeah, it's like a bandana, but uh, slightly different. Bandana is more universal, but it, this one is quicker. And on survival kit, you can let me. Oh, I, I use the other camera. Let me move it to the other camera. Okay. Okay, here I got a small knife yeah. because uh, it's super useful and uh, it's quite uh, steady. This one. I got a, a small torch. It's USB, it's easy to charge, and now it's uh, discharged, but uh, it's useful because uh, even if it's small, it can uh, make a nice light. Um, this is a oh. referee uh, whistle. Yeah. This is amazing. It will work for miles and miles because, uh, and uh, making signal, the ability to make a signal, it's uh, really something very important. 
these are uh, tampons, OB, uh, Tampax. Yeah. These are uh, cotton wrapping uh, waterproof uh, gear. This is a candle. This is a Dyneema cord because sometimes you need to tie things together uh, to repair shoes. This is Dyneema, a special cord which uh, can work. This is a, uh, this is a duct tape wrapped on a, on a tubular thing. Yes. This is a cordage. But you can use this cordage just to burn because uh, it's easy, easy, easy to start a fire with this. See, you yeah. will burn in, in a, you will uh, just open it up and uh, mm -hmm. you will burn in a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, with this, you can start a fire. Then a small thing uh, like uh, this uh, mirror for signaling, it's uh, special oh. because uh, you can see through the hole in this. Oh. Uh, those ones. You can use it as a first aid. They are a bit um, uh, painful when you use this uh, instead of uh, stitches, but it will keep uh, the stuff together. I stitched my dog, which was uh, uh, hit by a wild boar uh, in the trees. And this is another thing which uh, can be uh, used to start a fire is magnesium mixed with uh, ferrocerium. And no, this is not a good metal, but you can uh, start a fire quite easily with this one too. Wow. And uh, you can simply scratch uh, this uh, metal and um, use it as uh, a tinder to start a fire. Uh, but uh, I'm not, uh, 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 even for knives, uh, I never answer the question, which, which is the best knife? Because there is no best knife. Right. The best knife is the one that works for you, <laughs> that you know how to handle properly that you know like an extension of your arms. Uh, the right kit for you is something that you know that you might want to use. I mean, this mirror can be used, uh, you can use this uh, tin foil instead of the mirror. So you have, uh, you can get rid of the mirror and have less space. What's uh, the it's, uh, dot in the mirror, middle of the mirror for? What is the hole in oh, that? Oh, aim. With uh, the center of the mirror, you do like this, and you aim uh, uh, oh. to something that, in a, if you are catching something very far away, you don't know where you're reflecting. With this, you will have a precise uh, oh, like a aiming. Sight. It's like a, a sight. It's like a sight for uh, the mirror. But uh, by, by the way, whenever you find a chopper flying over you, you will get make this and the fire. And if you do teamwork, uh, someone is uh, flashing uh, the mirror, another one is making the fire. Uh, starting a fire quickly is uh, very, very important. Uh, or you can use, uh, surviving is about using stuff, uh, not for their purpose, but for something else, which is yeah, equally yeah. useful. Dual purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, multi, multi-purpose. Multi. This blanket is uh, flashing. If you are flashing in, in, uh, in the daytime, you will be seen for miles away and will attract attention. You can start uh, doing signals, but if you are coding signals, uh, that means that uh, someone is uh, too close. Uh, uh, it's already there. So something uh, more like a, a blanket, a, a huge blanket, it's two meter, uh, it's seven foot for uh, four foot so that two of, of peop two people can uh, use it as a flag, wave it yeah. in the wind, yeah. and will uh, draw a lot of attention. Yeah. Attention. Is there a code, and, like a Morse code, SOS, that's just, helpful to, so that any they... Any flash of light where it brings attention to yeah, you. Yeah, just a flash of light, but I mean, if you want to get more sophisticated... Uh, into... Yes, you can do this. Maybe I, let me see if I can show you... Uh, we created a card here uh, that we print and uh, put under plastic for uh, the course. Oh, one second, I share screen. Mm -hmm. uh. Also, um, while you do that, Tony is asking, I am asking, can you provide just the... Oh, that you can uh, carry with you? Here we go. Have uh, everything uh, that's uh, needed, but uh, oh. you you got Morse code. Uh, 
you uh -huh. got a tap code. I think the nine times out of 10, uh, you don't need anything of this, but if you know, uh, it can be useful. With tap code, it's great because it's easy to understand. It's this one on the... And uh, with Morse code, you have a long... Uh, you need to make a long uh, noise and a small noise, which is complicated. With yeah. tap code, you see that you have uh, X and Y. Uh, if you have to say the letter E, you make uh, five taps and then one tap. You first start with uh, X, then with the Y and you can create a word with this. In prison, in imprisonment camps, they use a, a tap code because Morse code will, uh, will not will, will simply with banks, but uh, it will work with uh, banks, uh, dots and dashes. Uh, not, it's not a situation in which you can do dots and dashes all the time. So, uh, but even the other signals, uh, yes, they are nice to know even the, the signals, but uh, starting a fire is the one thing that you should learn and uh, how to attract attention uh, to a draw Most basic attention to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, keeps you warm. Even if there are, times, yeah. there are times in which uh, uh, is useful uh, just the opposite. We, you need to disguise your traces, uh, maintain a low profile. Um, when you are visiting a foreign country we, in the areas uh, in which we are not sure how is the situation politically, which yeah. is the local boss, uh, and all this stuff that really happens. We need to maintain a low profile, we need to um, cover our tracks, uh, we need to walk in a certain uh, position, we need to cover the fire, we need to do just the opposite of uh, w w w what is signaling. We need to... Because in, the, in Africa, frequently, uh, you can... Um, the number one problem are poachers, like in Kenya, because uh, if you are in an area in which uh, there are poachers, and uh, um, if they, if you are on, on their way, they they are really ruthless. They are killers, so uh, they don't think twice to shoot some white guys uh, in their turf. So uh, even uh, maintaining low profile and knowing. Uh, just the two opposites uh, can be useful. Yeah. Because humans yeah. are the most dangerous species out there. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. wow. Well, coming back to the beginning of the conversation wow. for me, and that is that whole psychology, because we're in, mm -hmm. a, we're, we're in a situation where the world is shifting faster than ever because of technology, because of whatever, political, the environment. There's so many things shifting and changing, and it's... The idea that we try to we try to you tr right exactly yeah. we try to hold on to some reality that we were brought up with as children in that world <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore the 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 the, the, yeah. the times of the year shifted the times that you could do certain things then the the weather patterns and everything shifted so we need to rely on ourselves we need to have an ability within ourselves our own psychology to make these shifts even as something as the pandemic and how that impacted people and how people, you know, some people came up with amazing ways to pivot in new and, and exciting yeah. new, new discoveries, things happened, people who were able to make a psychological change of, okay, this is here, so now I'm going to do this instead. And so I think that that's part of survival. That's what you're talking about as well. And, and I feel like, and, and, you know, here we are setting Adaptation. In, yeah. Adaptation. Adaptation, and here we are sitting in a Zoom session. In the Zoom session, really, the, the power of Zoom was captured because of the pandemic. Everybody said, okay, I'm not going to be able to, to fly and go see each other in person. Let's do this. We're doing interviews yeah. this way. We're using it for our institute because we had to pivot. Um, we're using it to our advantage. We don't want it to be, uh, you know, we want it to have its role in its way that it, that it can contribute. So I, that psychology part of it is, is what I really am fascinated with. And, and especially, like you said, as a practitioner uh, uh, in the world of, of direct experience, shamanism, those kinds of areas, you're seeing the need for people to be able to have that adaptability. And I think that comes from people taking a moment for that present moment experience. First of all, you talked about the breath. 
but we also know that um, you know the field of meditation, yoga, all these different types of self development yeah. programs that are out there, the 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 ecstatic postures that we do, at its foundation is a transition for us to step back into the present moment, a chance for us to breathe in this universe and this reality that, that surrounds us because we're losing mm -hmm. focus because there's so many distractions out there in the world. And so exactly. I think that's the power also of your message. I find it also that if we can equip ourselves with a few simple tools, but also some skill sets, side by side, then we can be of service to others as well. Right. The, the many times you take your tweezers and help pull out the cactus thorns to somebody who's brushed up against it because right. you have tweezers right it's um and people yeah. don't think of it especially tourists uh, uh bringing those i mean the simplest thing is my point i remember but, i, I want to interject <clears throat> you know brother-in-law who said he says the problem is if you go out and buy survival food for yourself and you don't buy for your neighbors, your neighbors are going to come to your house with guns and say, give me your food. So <laughs> buy his perspective. Yeah, yeah. But that's that why, why you need both food and guns. <laughs> yeah. we, we live in community. Be prepared to help others. Yeah, be prepared you know, to help but, others. Okay, so somebody's in trouble by the side of the road. If you have something that can help, it's yeah, there. For, it's right, there. Right. We can help be of service <laughs> by being equipped. <laughs> right. Yeah, even... Uh, medical kit is uh, really important oh, yeah, uh, yeah. i have one in my car and uh this is the one i bring for me and uh the people i that come with me uh, during the courses uh, in the woods in uh, savannah and jungle or whatever because uh, uh yeah because it can uh, it happens even a scratch can turn into an infection so you right. need to well yeah. and um, right right well, this has exactly. been a fantastic conversation. I really have enjoyed talking with you, Fabrizio. <laughs> I can see by looking at your your uh, your mind map as you chart out all the different elements that there's so much depth to this. And I appreciate you taking the time today to bring us up to date. And like I say, both oh, yeah, both in the physical world where mm -hmm. we get maybe something happens or we're out in the wild, and also just we're in the mm -hmm. wilds of this this current civilization <laughs> and how that how we're gonna how will we gonna navigate the world that we live in it's a wild universe yeah be absolutely prepared. yeah it's interesting that you said nature is not here for us nature is not here to coddle us nature is right. not here to make the road easy we need to adapt to nature and what we've done and i i just want to say that we have adapted we have changed our world we've pulled out so many checks and balances that nature had to keep us as good members of the web of life. Um, and so we're now paying the price for some of those, as is all of the web of life here on planet Earth. So right. your, your thoughts on coexisting happily yeah. with nature. Mm -hmm. Our instinct is to protect ourselves, make ourselves comfortable, but any thoughts on how we can do that moving forward oh. so that all of life is comfortable and li living in harmony because that's one thing that is a skill set we need to learn better we moderns um let's not threaten everything as mm -hmm. we try to make ourselves safe it's a rather a bit of a paradox mm. yes that, that's a, that's an element of expanded consciousness that's an element of being a, having that deeper awareness and connectedness to all of life that surrounds yeah, us. yeah we need to be humble uh, in relationship with nature because uh, uh, yeah, we are just uh, uh, a part of it and not the master of it as uh, we are thinking since uh, 200 years uh, from the Illuministic era. So, uh, so, so we need to stay humble in comparison to nature you because know, it, uh, it can turn against us uh, in a matter of seconds. Yes. It, it or it can help me. us. Uh, it's just a mirror of uh, of us. If you if we can deal with uh, nature, it's uh, it can be our best friend. If we are afraid of nature, uh, we can die w without reason. If we can't adapt, there are tales of people which uh, didn't survive in a in situation in which they were meant to survive, like uh, on a raft, uh, stranded on a, simply on a raft with all the needs for uh, for weeks like food waters signals but they can cope with the situation they couldn't adapt instantaneously to the situation and then they died and on the opposite of sea they couldn't uh, have a cause of, of that it was unknown there was a uh, uh, dying of uh, 
loss of purpose of uh, uh, in adaptation. So uh, we need to be in tune with nature, in tune with ourselves, and shamanism can be of great help for you. <coughs> That's really well said. We, we, you know, you don't even have to go out into the wilds of, of the wilderness. Even the Institute in New Mexico has been a learning <laughs> lesson for me because every year I end yeah. up remodeling, but nature always takes everything back. We're always doing stuff with yeah. these buildings and stuff. And then next, as soon as we, as soon as we step away and come back, all of a sudden we see the mountain lion tracks and we see this happening and that happening. We see the, the weather has, has infiltrated. Things have been changed. The roads have eroded. Everything shifts constantly. <laughs> we do not control it. We're just lucky to be there for the amount of time that we've been We're there. We're lucky so. to coexist. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a friend of ours, Brian says, yeah. we need to ask ask the earth not what you can do for me we need to ask earth what can we do for you yeah right how can yeah uh, exactly. exactly tony says don't forget the pack right? and and we need to listen to the answer uh, because the answer might be something we don't like yeah the answer yeah. and the ancestors were there any comments any stories uh, that anyone no, wanted to share there was none uh, by everybody uh, saying thank you for, so, yeah. for your raised hands okay so well let's just say thank you so much fabrizio this there's has been fantastic be italian there's yeah, oh be yes italian. let me spoke to you in there's italian oh shoshana shoshana mi fa molto piacere you know prego prego <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love the enthusiasm of the language, uh, you yeah. know, and, and the people. I mean, we we uh, traveled to the island of Malta for us uh, uh, just to go look at all the uh, ancient um, temple uh, sites. Temple sites. But while wow, we were there, uh, the anniversary, it was the anniversary of of uh, the uh, oh the uh, Independence Day the Independence for the Day. island of Malta they, and, and and they, they had, had Scottish bagpipes they had everybody they had very but the the most parade. fun parade the most fun was parade the Italians. the Italians take over yeah they know how to dance <laughs> sing and have fun everybody had all these strict kind yeah, of things noisy, oh. yeah, too then noisy, it comes too the Italians oh yeah and so the lead uh, the lead head of the of the parade grabs us I don't yeah. know why he grabbed us out of the crowd and had us dance with him yeah we had to go dance. It was fun. But they were the, the yeah, most joyous, the most happy. What I like about Italy, because I spent a semester of college in uh, in Italy, roaming around the country, is that when and we would fly to Mil we didn't go to Milan. We flew to we were based in Rome. Flow to fly to Florence, fly here, fly there, short plane flights. You land and everybody claps and uh, celebrates a landing of a plane <laughs> have you been to a concert or like an opera in italy where the applause goes on for minutes and minutes and minutes oh, i'm sorry <laughs> I we love, love it. it yeah that happens I'm i love sorry. it Wonderful. they really show their appreciation yeah, yeah. i've been there for four yeah. years totally yeah oh, i think because wow. it's uh, uh the the are, uh, oh my gosh we are um, superstitious yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah. it, we, are, we are sure that we take off, but we are never sure that we land. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so celebrate. No. It's just like so joyous and <laughs> fun. It's in yeah. our DNA because uh, we, we, yeah. I don't know if you know about the situation of Italy and we, we pay taxes like hell and uh, it's yeah. uh, surviving its uh, second nature in Italy and, yeah. and they are superstitious. So uh, yeah, they cheer each time they, the, the plan lands. Uh, even uh, I've seen horrible lands, uh, which I will never uh, plowed for, but uh, they always do. Yeah. Yeah. My, my favorite yeah. was Thank you. I've invited to go on these little tiny Thank cars, you, roaming down a country road to go to some castle, some restaurant, some something, and it's a full moon. And suddenly the lead car stops. Everybody stops, pulls them off to the side of the road. Everybody rolls down their window. Somebody turns on the radio and you dance. Everybody's dancing in oh, the wow. middle of a country road under the full moon and then suddenly and i don't understand the language it stops everybody calls in the car and goes on like, <laughs> like okay that's, well, that yeah, was where exactly northern italy middle center of the world what well, part of italy was that remember? Uh, oh, probably outside rome or something we we're based in rome so i don't know yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, it's just it, it was just so spontaneous it sounded spontaneous to me maybe it was planned i don't yeah, know a couple years but maybe ago. somebody's favorite song came on and you had to oh, dance they to it might be they might be drugs as well yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was 
wasn't doing the drugs. I was no. just along for the ride. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, 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 him. It's him. like him. one of my favorite countries. Yeah. Fabrizio, thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Blessings, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.